running now. Running now, okay. Yeah. Hello. Hello again, everybody. Uh, this is the first in um, probably another 30 days. I'm kind of tentatively committing to that again. And I'm back at uh, George's amazing studio overlooking the Edinburgh Castle. And today I'm going to use some charcoal and watercolour paint. And um, that's it, really, because <laughs> I've actually left most of my materials at home. I'm on my way to Wales to teach for the weekend fantastic day and look out the window it's incredible like there's a really lovely light falling on the castle it's early afternoon and um, I'm just going to see what happens on here now using charcoal first I think and what I'm what I'm interested in here is that there's the there's the the kind of the, the castle up here and then there's this lovely sweep down to the domes and I thought what might be interesting for you guys to, to have a go at is the find an interesting horizon line that involves a couple of architectural kind of uh, features like you know something nice and then in the middle there's a splash of spring green so I've put out some of um, uh, the borrowed paint from George to um, to work for the spring green so hopefully again th as usual there's um, a small enough memory on my phone so that's why I'm talking with this sense of urgency there's something in the, there's a balance there's a middle ground between feeling inspired and focused and overwhelmed so I think I think I'm walking the middle way just now so we'll see okay who know who knows actually all right so yeah what will I start with I think I will start actually with the drawing with the charcoal just to capture um, the this kind of variety in the edge where the castle stops and the sky begins and it's lovely how it's up on a height um, and I like that the charcoal can kind of quickly identify that. But I want to also make sure I'm leaving enough space that I can get the dome of the church, the cathedral here. It should be kind of around there, I think. Something like there, yeah. Okay, it's quite a mess already, isn't it? Jeez. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think I'm going to start using the paint. So the black watercolour um, yeah just to begin to get a feeling for the depth of shadow that's there you watching the paint work there short <laughs> don't blame you okay so there's a bit of black there and then there might be a kind of a clear enough shadow here too where the wall is cast Casting a shadow onto even the grass. It's all quite dark looking there. Mm. The significant thing about today, and it's worth celebrating, is the blue of the sky. And in order to really celebrate that, like in order to just take these off, in order to make it nice and clean, I'm going to use the cleaner water. It's really in blue. <coughs> no, nice, really in blue, wasn't very clean. I just realised we didn't move over the mat when I moved the easel. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put some sky on there. I think your blue will be a lot cleaner than my blue, George. And it's more of a sky blue that you have, I think, but with a touch of ultramarine in it. You see a touch. I mean, really, we have to, we have to kind of, we have to have the blue sky in there. And then it, it, there's a dip down here for where the spring green of the tree will be, kind of dappled through the, through the sky, we'll see those leaves. And it comes down a little bit lower, and it looks like there's lines that way in the sky there. Maybe a little bit more of the ultramarine blue in that section. Clean. Okay, now let's just try and dry it really quickly. <laughs> Actually, while it's drying, I'm going to turn it upside. I'm going to leave it upside down and kind of get myself ready for whatever colour the green is going to be. Yeah, I think the, the green needs a bit more. Let's see now. Just clean that out. Hmm. Good having all this kitchen paper handy. 
that's a bit more like the spring green feel and a bit of the lemon yellow into it will really make the sun come through it and that's kind of there and there was that same greenish color i think on the grass where it, it met the um shadow i'm really working back the front here now so i have no idea what's gonna but i think it's about time to turn it back up Hmm. Well, I'm kind of getting a feel for the day here. Okay. Yeah, so something of the... Yeah, I remember the last time that ultramarine blue was quite a good one for the rocks under the castle. And there's this area here behind the tree that has some of that same feel to it. So I'm going to use the ultramarine blue as a way of identifying the rock that... Uh, well, the, first the wall. And then the rock that kind of comes down behind the tree there and over here there's that little bit of rock there too kind of hmm. i think a bit more of the black somehow because that really is in stark contrast to the brightness of the trees brightness of the trees that are here And the brightness of the tree that's right in the center there mm, not really sure it's actually that kind of yellow color I'm very sorry but there's really there's a lot of splashing anyway we'll get there okay let's pick up this one because i think i need some of um this yellow ochre and maybe <coughs> yellow ochre and cadmium orange to get a feeling of and cadmium red to get a feeling of the warmth that's on this side of the building. There's a kind of a sandstone quality to the stonework, I think, there. Yeah. Will you maybe tell me when there's like a couple of minutes to go, George, or a minute or something? Yeah. Seven minutes past. Okay, oh. I can maybe breathe a little bit. Okay. Need that wall a bit too far over there so it's handy having the brightness falling on um, the light side because it identifies the form of things um, yeah, a bit more grass I think on this side yeah, and I did speak about that lovely horizon line <coughs> I want to make something more of that because that was really what intrigued me in the beginning so now I'm getting um, this bluey green colour and I'm going to, yeah, I'm kind of using a little bit of artistic license to, to bring the two small, the smaller of the two domes in there and I want to use it really lightly so that I'm not getting stuck in the detail. So I just identify this, the front um, kind of tower and then the smaller one coming to the back there. I'm going to bring a bit of that nice blue in. And then it looks as though there's that, that dome also has some blue in it, but it's more of an ultramarine blue, I reckon. Oh, that's here. Yeah. I'm going to change, you know, to draw with um, the screen colour because that's where the trees are down there. And the two inch brush will allow me to make bigger marks with that same green because that really occupies quite a bit of the picture plane the green color so lemon yellow and sap green i think is pretty much the mix that i've got in general here mm -hmm. and it comes down into meet that dome that bright green Okay, and maybe 
maybe the, the charcoal will begin again to make sense of things a little bit more. It does feel like there's this constant kind of push and pull, you know, trying to uh, extract order from the chaos. But the chaos is enjoyable. There's, the, the, there's a real joyful kind of spring feel to this beautiful um, vista out the window here. Okay, so I'm just clarifying some things. George, I'm going to steal one of your blue crayons. Is it okay if I take one of your blue? Sure. Sorry. I just remember seeing this lovely sky blue colour in here. And it's oil pasta. <coughs> so this snow will allow me to really... See that? There we go. Is it oil pasta? I think it is. Yeah. Just getting a bit of brightness in. Because there's a crispness to the edges of things on a spring bright summer spring summer day like this there's a real crisp clarity at the edge that I think it was I wasn't really getting with the charcoal so much because of the way I smudged it so it's nice to be able to reintroduce that clarity yeah and there's even another blue that's um I think this one is going to work as well a little further over I thought that that was my phone alarm, but it's the trans. That's the, the bell that I'm hearing all morning. You know, I thought that was the phone alarm all the time. Something like that, can do. Okay, 12 minutes, all right, okay. So to find, more, find out more about what I'm up to, have a look at the links below, and there'll be something where you can kind of sign up to join me in this 30 day challenge, 10 minutes a day-ish. To do something creative. I might do a little bit more after the video stops and I post the finished one at the end. All right, thanks for joining me. See ya. Did it stay?